Over the past two years of this pandemic, I've mentioned the word comorbidities quite a bit. And I think I've only defined it maybe once or twice, and I haven't really talked in depth much about what it really means in the current landscape. So we're doing it, let's go. Uh, because this week, the personification of a small bag of cocaine hidden inside a hedge fund manager's asshole, Donald Trump Jr., tweeted 75% of COVID deaths were in people with at least four comorbidities, according to the CDC. That's it. That's the tweet. Wow, such a mic drop. Uh, never mind the fact that his statement is wrong. You know, actually, don't never mind it. Let's... Let's start off with that. Uh, Donnie got that figure from an interview the director of the CDC did with Good Morning America. Uh, Dr. Rochelle Walensky told GMA that a study of 1.2 million people who were vaccinated between December and October demonstrated that severe disease occurred in about 0.015% of the people and death in 0.003% of those people. The overwhelming number of deaths, over 75%, occurred in people who had at least four comorbidities. She was clearly talking about people who had been vaccinated, not just all people who died of COVID. But GMA's editors screwed up. And in the interview that was broadcast, they snipped out the bit that made it clear that this was a study on people who had been vaccinated. This led to a conservative field day. Basically, all of the deaths are people who were, I don't know, just gonna die anyway, so whatever. Uh, that's the messaging that Donnie Jr. and friends went with. While I'm glad that GMA released the full transcript to correct their record on what Walensky was actually saying, ultimately, it doesn't really matter because the conservative crowing reveals a fundamental misunderstanding of what comorbidities are. And additionally, Walensky's actual in-context statement went on to be kind of shitty. Uh, she continued, so really these are people who were unwell to begin with. And yes, really encouraging in the context of Omicron. Yes, we're really encouraged by these results. Okay, yes, it is technically encouraging that most thrice vaccinated people will survive COVID. And yes, having four comorbidities might be considered unwell, but maybe there's a better way to say it because those quite unwell people took it upon themselves as individuals to do what we've all been saying that they should do. They got three vaccines. They probably quarantined as best they could and they probably wore masks because all of those things tend to go together. And they still died. Why? Because the people who don't have four comorbidities or who think they don't have any comorbidities didn't think that those lives were worth saving because they were just going to die anyway. And fuck those people who think that, honestly. Um, so with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the comorbidities, what they actually are, and whether or not we're talking about people who are barely clinging to life anyway. You probably already know that COVID-19, like any disease really, is worse for people with comorbidities. Comorbidities are just conditions that a person has. It could be another virus, a bacteria, a fungal growth, a state of being, uh, a physical or psychological problem that can overlap with the primary disease of concern. Sometimes that term comorbidities is used to describe conditions that go hand in hand. Um, they might be related in some way or they might just show up commonly together like how anxiety and depression often show up in the same patient. Like in me, that's me, we're talking about me, aren't I special? In the case of COVID-19, when we say comorbidities, we're referring to the underlying conditions that specifically increase a person's risk of having a really rough time, turning what would otherwise or could otherwise be a really bad cold into something requiring hospitalization or even ventilation or even leading to death. I'm actually kind of surprised to look back over the past two years of my videos and see that I haven't addressed this because I have addressed it privately to some friends and family members, like 
since the very beginning of this pandemic. Um, I remember it first came up when someone I knew, like literally March 2020, said fear over COVID was overblown because the only people who were going to die were old people and maybe obese people, which big sigh. Don't worry, I'm not friends with that person anymore. They're obviously a bad person. Um, so age and BMI are comorbidities for COVID-19. Lately, I have seen people argue that it is fat phobic to point out the BMI thing, but it, it's not. It's just true. Just as it's not ageist to point out that elderly people are more at risk, it's not fat phobic to point out that people with higher BMIs are more at risk. You can argue all you want that you as an individual are healthy. You don't let your BMI define you. Your individual BMI isn't valid because you're a bodybuilder or whatever. It doesn't matter to this conversation because BMI in this case is being used the way that it is meant to be used scientifically, which is as a population level statistic to help us understand increasing risk factors. It's not a moral judgment, just like it's not that for any other comorbidity. That said, I do find it beyond disgusting when people like the person I mentioned earlier dismiss deaths because a person had a particular comorbidity. Not only do those people's lives matter just as much as anyone else's, but it's ridiculous to say a disease that disproportionately affects older people and people with higher BMIs, uh, that it's not gonna be a big deal here in the United States, considering that 16% of Americans are over the age of 65, and a majority of Americans, nearly 70%, have a BMI that is considered at least overweight, which is considered a comorbidity. That's right, most Americans have a COVID-19 known comorbidity. So even if you don't care about those older people, people with higher B BMIs, if you don't care about them as individuals uh, because you're a sociopath or whatever, you should at least care about them on a population level because that many people being disabled and killed by an otherwise preventable disease will absolutely bring a society to its knees, which is, you know, it's happening. You may have gathered from the CDC director's comment about four comorbidities, there are more comorbidities than just being overweight or old. Here is uh, the complete list of other conditions that significantly increase your risk of hospitalization or death from COVID-19. First up, we've got cancer. Obviously, any kind of cancer is going to make you more vulnerable, but people with blood cancer fare worse than those with solid tumors. There's even some evidence to suggest that people who have a history of cancer in the past, even if they've recovered, might be more at risk of COVID-19. Then we've got chronic kidney disease and chronic liver disease. Chronic lung diseases, of course, but that includes moderate to severe asthma. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, they thought asthma might not be a big deal. Turns out if it's moderate to severe, it is a big deal. Uh, dementia, diabetes, both type one and type two, Down syndrome, heart conditions, which includes heart failure, coronary artery disease, cardiomyopathies, and possibly even high blood pressure. HIV, immunocompromised state due to a genetic condition, or taking medicine that hampers your immune system, which includes, by the way, prolonged use of steroids like cortisone or prednisone. Mental health disorders, including depression. Hey, look, it's me again. Uh, pregnancy, that's right, pregnancy is a comorbidity. Sickle cell disease, smoking, and this is nuts, that includes people who used to smoke but quit solid organ or blood stem cell transplant, stroke, as in if you have ever had one in your life, substance abuse that includes alcohol or opioids and tuberculosis. So there you go, including age and weight, that's like 20 items, which encompass several dozen additional specific conditions beneath them. So when the CDC director says 75% of fully vaccinated patients who die from COVID-19 had four or more comorbidities, that may include, yes, someone on their deathbed with a debilitating stroke, a malfunctioning liver, blood cancer, and tuberculosis. But, it could also mean Emily, 
your 65 year old neighbor who is five foot four and weighs 160 pounds, who quit smoking five years ago and recently got a prescription for Zoloft. She liked to garden. She had a monthly pinochle club. She had two cats named Helter and Skelter. She had a wicked sense of humor and she always remembered everyone's birthday. Emily got triple vaccinated, not for herself, because she was healthy, despite the four comorbidities that she didn't even know she had. Uh, so not for herself, but she got vaccinated for all of the, the vulnerable people around her in her community. And now her husband doesn't know what he's gonna do with his life. Her daughter is devastated that Emily is never going to meet her granddaughter. You know, wh what did you accomplish in your past 20 years of life? Because Emily had at least that much time left if everyone had been like her and got vaccinated and wore their masks. But someone sent their coughing kid to school and that infected a teacher who infected another kid who gave it to his dad, who went to his monthly card club, and now Emily is dead and the director of the CDC is calling it a win. I'm not suggesting that Emily is the bulk of the vaccinated people who died of COVID, but I am suggesting that we need to do away with the conservative talking point that says people with comorbidities are just waiting around, taking up resources until their inevitable deaths. These are human beings with lives and hopes and dreams, and they did everything they could to say, stay safe, and it wasn't enough because of Donald Trump and his son and their death cult all of whom most assuredly have more comorbidities than they realize. Unfortunately, they won't realize how much they have in common with people like Emily until it's too late.